Welcome back. Former Botswana President Ian Kama has been invited by the Dalai Lama to attend a ceremony marking his 60th year of exile in India. He's travelled to India via South Africa. Now, in an interview with SABC News anchor Desiree Chauke, Kama thanked the South African government for affording him a safe passage on this trip to India. The conversation also covered a wide range of issues, including, amongst others, Kama's relationship with his successor, Dr. Mukherjee Masisi, the raid on his accountant's office, his thoughts on Zimbabwe and China. China and of course the importance of this trip to India. I think it's very important because um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama <coughs> has done so much in trying to spread the word, the good word um, for humankind. Uh, his kindness, his compassion, promoting peace and unity um, where he can. So I think someone like that deserves a lot of support. Um, for my part when I was in office we actually invited uh, the Dalai Lama to visit Botswana, uh, an initiative of theirs, the Mind and Life uh, Conference, which was held in Botswana, which he was going to attend. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to come at the last minute due to ill health. You have a role now as a former president of Botswana. Um, they say in politics a week is a long time, but it seems in Botswana it's just almost a year that we saw you standing side by side with uh, President Mukhoitse uh, Musisi. And uh, only in a few months' time now, we're hearing about you, reports of you reporting to the Bangwadu to report that uh, they're targeting your family, um, they want you gone away. What did you mean by that? Well, it's a bit of a long story. Um, you know, when he uh, was my vice president, um, I had no issues at all, to be honest. Um, I chose him um, from amongst others who had more experience, more maturity than himself, um, because I thought as well, because, you know, you have to be conscious, even though it was never really an issue in Botswana, uh, what we would call the north-south uh, uh, divide. We, we've always been able to, um, you know, ignore such issues. But one didn't want to perpetuate any kind of impression or feeling that the leadership of the country um, is the prerogative of one geographical side of the country and not the other. So that was one of the reasons why I thought I should bring him in as my vice president. Um, despite the fact that I knew later on, having done that appointment, there were those, of course, who were not happy. But I just looked upon it as anything else. You know, you could ask anybody, even in your own country, who do you think should be vice president, who should be this minister or that minister. It's always debate around. And you'll have, you know, you'll ask a hundred people, you'll have a hundred different opinions. So you've got to go with someone who you think would do the job, would, do the, uh, would, would be the best suited for the job. And that's what I did. But um, regrettably and very unfortunately since that time, um, I've come to realize that um, maybe I had misjudged. And, and, and now we have a situation where there's a bit of a standoff between himself and Is myself. Is it true that you're not talking? Um, when we meet, which is very rarely, we will of course uh, uh, talk um, but otherwise we just go our own ways mm -hmm. and and um, uh, I have had to uh, put up with being uh, attempts deliberate attempts to be isolated uh, by the government whether it's for national events or, or, or um, you know even like on this trip going to the Dalai Lama to visit this uh, to go to India for this 60th anniversary um, the government said they were not going to facilitate the trip in any way and um, yet they are supposed to give me funding uh, that's that's a provision for one of my benefits um, so that's something which I'm taking up legally uh, unfortunately I have to do that um, they instructed our embassies through the countries I'll be passing through not to provide me any protocol assistance and um, I'm very grateful here in South Africa that I have been provided that assistance and um, and also that uh, yesterday <coughs> the security team 
uh, who are charged with my protection were instructed not to accompany me on this trip as well. So those are the kind of things which we are uh, putting up with at the moment. What's the basis of this animosity? You talk about these instructions that have been given to embassies, but we hear as well that local media has been uh, instructed not to cover your events. Not Is that true? Not local media, the government media. Because what, what was happening um, for the first couple of months, yeah, I decided that I was going to continue with my engagement with outreach programs. Because I felt it's very, very importantly, and when I was in office, I used to fashion, I consider myself a humanist and a conservationist. And I care very much about the welfare of people, the environment, and, and all forms of wildlife. And um, I said I wanted to continue in that role, even mm -hmm. afterwards. So I said, you know, people are not just going to see me disappear off the face of the earth once I leave office. I want to continue, but as long as there are disadvantaged people in, this, in our country, I will continue to try and improve their lives. And that's what I've been doing. Is there any truth to latest reports that uh, there's a chance that uh, regulations to ban uh, elephant culling could be overturned? No, it's not the ban of elephant culling. It's, it's to, to overturn the ban on hunting because we, we banned hunting um, uh, several years ago. And, and there were specific reasons why we did that. And one of the first things he indicated was that he wanted to uh, overturn that ban. And there was talk of consideration of culling of elephants. And, and that's something I, I also have a, a big problem with. Because, again, when he was my vice president, this was never an issue between us. He never mentioned that shouldn't we lift the ban, should we, shouldn't we do culling. So he's the president now. He, uh, you know, he doesn't, have to, he doesn't answer to me. Do he you doesn't recognize him? Of course. And of course, his authority. He, he, he's the president. You know, I've been there. If anyone should recognize that he's the president, it should be me, because I've been there. And, um, but it's just a bit strange that someone who worked with you, who supported what you were doing, who agreed with things that you were doing, would suddenly do this about face. But like I say, he doesn't have to, he doesn't answer to me. He's the president now. He can introduce whatever policies he likes. But one feels a bit hurt and put out that what we've spent many years building and the successes we've had and our reputation is known when it comes to conservation and as a democracy to see that starting to go into reverse that is something which um, uh, one can't just sit by and let happen. Which other areas do you feel are being reversed, especially the ones we don't know about? One that comes to mind right now, our interview comes at the back of International Women's Day, uh, Ms. Uh, Bilunomi Muidoi. Yes, Vincent Muidoi. There's a story there about her being removed from her position as a minister yeah. because she has a, had expressed an intention to challenge the number one office. You were seen to be working a lot towards the improvement of, of gender uh, relations in Botswana. Do you feel that do you feel that that is being reversed as well? And which other areas uh, do you feel in terms of your legacy? Well, I won't say that. No, there, there's um, a reversal in the recognition of trying to ensure that we have gender equality in our country. I, of course, try to play my part as much as possible to promote women in various sectors, especially in the public sector, which I had direct control over, and hope that would influence others to follow suit in the country, uh, which, I, which I believe it did. But the, the issue you mentioned about her being dropped as a cabinet minister was not so much, I think, because she was a woman. It was more because of his intolerance of having an opponent. I mean, you take this country, for example, um, your president, when he was deputy president, and he was when he was in a contest with Mazuma, um, and after uh, uh, he emerged victorious, um, he actually elevated her and put her in the in the in the in the presidency as a minister. Whereas on our side, the reverse happened: uh, a minister was fired because she dared to stand against him, and that is immaturity, it's political intolerance, and had he rather reached out and said, oh no, you're welcome, um, you know, uh, uh, my sister, and, 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 and may the best person win, 
um, it, 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 the opposite happened and she now has uh, to be looking over her shoulders all the time they've got and, and people from the intelligence uh, mm -hmm. departments following her around you know when she travels around the country so that's just not an atmosphere that we are used to in Botswana yes. you know, and there's a lot of intimidation and and and, and fear and, and like I say it's just upsetting that what after would be everything the we've end done. game, though, in fighting a person such as yourself? You've already served your time in office. I'm not sure I follow your, your line of... What, what uh, would uh, the current president hope to achieve by having this, um, uh, directing this animosity towards you? Well, not a lot, actually, because right now um, the, the ruling party is very much divided. Um, and and um, I'm aware that a lot of people uh, are very unhappy. It's caused a kind of um, uncertainty in the, in the country going forward. I've heard that there have even been some investors who have said, look, we want to hold on because we're not sure where this is, this is heading. So we really need to get this thing sorted out uh, sooner, much sooner rather than later. One of your other legacies is your refusal to engage with uh, former President Robert Mugabe's Zimbabwe. And recently you have been quoted as warning Zimbabwe not to deal with Zimbabwe, not to deal with China, and uh, really watch who they deal with in terms of investors and that they must uh, make sure that the people they bring in must have the interests of Zimbabwe at heart. What are your thoughts about the kind of uh, financial assistance that Botswana is uh, uh, meeting out to, to, to Zimbabwe? Well, let me just start with what you attribute to having been my words about Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, China, Zimbabwe, China relations. Just to say that no, that didn't come from me. Uh, I don't know where you would have got that from, but certainly the the the, the extension of of a of assistance to Zimbabwe is something that I even did <coughs> during my term in office. Uh, also, we did. We reported a lot during yeah, your time. We, 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 we extended a line of credit because. relations. Because, definitely, because for the same reason, um, as a democracy, Botswana is a democracy, and what we want for our people, um, the observance of human rights, uh, for them to have and enjoy their freedoms, as a member of the international community, we would like to influence that. Um, for other nations mm -hmm. where there's a deficit in democracy. And so right on our doorstep we had um, President Mugabe who, who was uh, flying in the face of, uh, of democracy. And, and, and yes, I knew I took flack for standing out um, uh, on the continent and, and pointing this out. Uh, criticism of Bashir, you know, uh, of Sudan and, and the, our support for the International Criminal Court and so on. But I just said I could sleep much better at night yes. knowing that I had stood up for those principles. And um, so it wasn't that we had, even it might have been a fractured relationship, but we did have a relationship. We continued having a relationship with Zimbabwe because the relationship isn't just between two people, the presidents, it's between two peoples. So as much as those things may have happened, we used to try and help out Zimbabwe when they went through difficulties. What are your thoughts about the reported uh, um, enthusiasm of countries like China to suddenly come into Botswana and do business with the country? You know, um, that's a very good question because it's something that I felt quite strongly about. China, as we know now today, is the second biggest economy uh, in the world. And people countries would be falling over themselves, tripping over themselves to get China to invest in their countries. Mm. But at what cost? If there's going to be investment, it must be a win-win situation. Uh, we don't want to have a situation where now uh, China comes in and then they literally, because ours is a small economy, we have a small population, and the way they do a things... A significant economy. Yes. But, but the way they do things would be always to try and bring in companies and bring in an entire uh, workforce, labor force. And I've always said, it's not my role to create employment for Chinese. My role is to play, create employment for Botswana at the time. So we have to handle this very carefully. Plus the second issue 
was the quality of the work that they delivered and it was not of a good quality and that was another problem I had. There was also the accompanying problem of corruption um, with uh, nationals. I'm not generalizing but there was a lot of uh, that tendency of, 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 of corruption. And then when you look at China as a country, it's not a democracy, which is what we are. And, and so why Hopnob? I had a couple of invitations for state visits to China and I declined them because I just say, how do you hobnob with a, a, a leader and, and the present leader who himself seems to have rolling back as well on democracy in that country. And, and they've got a very bad human rights record. They are trying to illegally claim uh, 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 territory in the South China Sea and they are oppressing um, religious uh, freedom in their countries. The Muslim population, the Uyghurs, uh, you've heard about the, the sort of uh, centers that they are confined in for re-education or whatever it happens to be. So what is the solution then? Do we just completely not deal with China or do you create a conducive environment? One would like to, but you know I think it's going to be very difficult because there's no doubt they have set themselves an agenda which they are following through. And I don't think they're going to be uh, diverted by that agenda. And certainly a small country like Botswana is probably not going to have much impact. It needs many. I mean, if you look at when we we're talking earlier on about wildlife, you look how long the, the ivory trade, the illegal wildlife trade was, at, was mushroom in Africa. And China was one of the biggest markets for that, uh, that, that trade. And this was doing a lot of harm to countries on the continent. But look how many years it took before China finally said they were going to do away with themselves being a market. Um, but by then, the continent had lost already so many elephants and had really undermined. So my, my giving you that as an example is that China is going to continue to do what it thinks is best for China. And the rest of us, uh, there will be nice words given that no, no, they are trying to develop uh, the continent and Africa and so on. But I can tell you, that when I did discuss this with others who I won't mention, they also have come to realize that it's not the sort of um, uh, silver lining that they expected in, in dealing with China. So you just have to be very careful. And, and also, it's also important always, as much as it may be attractive to get loans, interest-free loans and grants and everything from a country like that, you don't put all your eggs in one basket economically. You must device, diversify your markets because one day when China does run into problems economically as it is now, um, it's going to pull everyone down with it who have all rushed over there to, to and as, as a sort of uh, a major uh, investor in their economies. How are the disagreements between yourselves and President Musisi affecting uh, the Botswana Democratic Party and by extension the Southern African Development, uh, uh, um, the SADC, uh, the main office is headquartered in Botswana. So by extension how is that affecting those relations? No, I think it has nothing, no effect on SADC um, at the moment, um, but certainly uh, the party uh, is going through some difficult times um, as a result of uh, as a result of this, and that's why it needs to be resolved sooner rather than later because uh, we have elections later this year, and 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 um, we also have an elective congress uh, in about a month's time, where he will he'll be the first president to actually be challenged, um, and the reason, like I said earlier on, is being challenged is because it's felt that he's not doing a good enough job and being challenged by um, um, the, the former minister, uh, Benson Moitoy. So yes, the going into that, uh, we see a lot of things going on which um, really show our unity and therefore our success at the elections being threatened. Is there a crisis in Botswana? No, I wouldn't call it a crisis. Um, but over time, it could lead to that. But I'm confident that the foundation that has been laid for our country, the years of um, um, solid good governance and democracy, and also the culture and character of the Botswana people will see us over this, uh, this, this what I would say is a temporary uh, glitch in Moving our history.
Moving from, and just finally, just moving from the country to the individual, we've just heard reports that your, your accountant's offices were raided and there are chances that you could be inve investigated for tax evasion. How are you holding up individually and uh, how do you hope to fight these battles? You know, my accountant's offices were raided, but they weren't raided because of me, because he has many other clients. So they were actually targeting other people because the search warrant uh, actually indicated the people or the companies they were looking for and, and, and I wasn't part of that. But um, uh, in the kind of atmosphere that exists now, the kind of raids, you know, when you talk about tax evasion, well, I just want to say, and you'd expect me to say it, but I have never ever avoided taxes. Uh, and I'm glad you mentioned that I have an accountant because He's the one responsible for making sure that I file my tax returns on time and properly as per the law requires. So that I've done religiously uh, year on year. But what is um, very, very disturbing was that someone else was arrested, um, the former head of intelligence. Uh, as soon as he and his family arrived back from overseas, a big high profile arrest at the instructions. Yes, we saw that in the, the news. You saw that, yeah and on his instructions and 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 they've been to his house on several occasions and up to today this is now what two months since that high profile raid in front and the media were invited to witness it at an international airport um, and what did it turn up nothing um, so you would have thought from my experience uh, both in the security uh, agencies having served there and my time in government that when you have a kind of um, high-profile arrest of that nature, you've definitely got something on the person you're arresting. But up to now, zero. But this is just the kind of um, situation we are now going through in the country, mm -hmm. which we've never seen before. You're not only a former president, but your family uh, is held in high regard in, in Botswana. How is the extended family holding up uh, with these turn of events? Well, obviously being family, uh, they're not happy about it. Uh, we discuss it quite often. But you know, I'm not really concerned about myself and the family. I'm concerned about the country. Because I don't want the 10 years as president and the 10 years as vice president before that um, was for me an investment in ensuring that I should move with others to move our country up the ladder. And, 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 and to see um, that now um, starting to come apart, um, we just cannot allow that to happen by any means. You're about to travel um, to India. Are you um, certain that you'll be able to return back home without any glitches? <laughs> yes. No, things haven't gone that bad yet. Yeah, they haven't gone. I would hope so. <laughs> that but certainly, yeah, no, I don't think things are, 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 are like that. But I'm, I'm coming home one way or the other anyway. What would you like to say to President Masisi? I would like him to be that person I thought I knew when he was my vice president. Because really, at that time, um, we were almost like brothers. You know, we were close. I couldn't really fault him as my vice president and 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 despite what others were telling me about him I just didn't see it and so I took bullets for him um, I supported him you know f with all his career enhancing ambitions you know especially for the chairmanship of the party and so on and even when there was a mini cabinet revolt about him you know I stood by him and 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 um, and but he had a, a nature a character which, which, um, uh, which I just felt very close to and part of. And so what I'm seeing now is a totally different person um, than the one I knew. And if he could just... So obviously I think it, he has it in him. Even if it was an act, please could he bring back that act again uh, so that you know, the country can move forward and be the, the, the reputation, enjoy the reputation it's, it's always had over um, his and my predecessor's time.
Do you think there's anything you could have done to um, bring about this turn of events? Or in, in any way could you have uh, prevented it from becoming this way? You have been uh, uh, blamed of sometimes uh, bullying him. I don't know if that is true. You can tell us. Um, bullying him since he became president. It, um, there are reports that you want him to appoint certain people, um, a Mr. Is it Mr. Guma, um, and uh, some reports saying that you want him to appoint a, a, your brother. That, 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 that appointment of Mr. Guma, again, I don't know where that comes from. Um, he is a member of parliament. He happens to be leading the campaign for the former minister, uh, Vincent Moitoy's campaign for the presidency. He's the one who mentioned my brother, that I was upset that he hadn't appointed my brother as a vice president. You know, I've said to people, and I've said it publicly, having been the president, I know it is the prerogative of the president to appoint whoever he wants in cabinet. So, yes, for me it would have been nice for my brother to have been appointed, but I'm adult enough, mature enough to know that you know, he can appoint whoever he wants. Mm -hmm. And you know, if anyone should be upset, it should be my brother, surely. So why should I carry that um, feeling of, of, of being let down on my brother's behalf? I don't. I'm getting on and doing my own things. My brother's there. He's decided he wants, he will serve in his cabinet and serve the country. And, and, and good luck to, to him. Rahama, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, uh, we really are truly honored. Uh, just what do you think are Mwidoi's chances going into that party congress? Right now they're looking pretty good. And, 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 and the better the chances, you know, it was, it's, it was slow at the beginning, but now the momentum for her is picking up uh, very well. And when I last spoke to her and Mr. Guma, who you refer to now, um, they are very confident of, of a success. Former Botswana President Ian Khama there unpacking uh, the animosity or the reported animosity uh, between himself and his successor, the incumbent president, Makhoiti Masisi, speaking to my colleague Desri Chauke a couple of days ago. Well, we'll have more sports news after the break.